gospel according to Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. The song of Christmas. E. Stanley Jones once said, The Magnificent is the most revolutionary document in the world. I don't know why he said that. This is the gospel according to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Simply the... Uh, nine Bible verses recorded in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, consist of a celebration song about her divine pregnancy. A raw thankfulness for the coming of Christ, for the liberation of the oppressed, the marginalized. The triumph over the powerful through the protest and resistance. It is a song of liberation. A song intended to tell us God's restoration plan. These messages of prophetic hope reflect what God is going to do with his people. Mary is thankful for the significant role she gets to play in fulfilling the prophecies of the uh, promised Messiah. It is one thing to hope for and pray for, another thing to uh, play a role in the salvation story. This uh, praise comes from her soul and from her inner spirit. With uh, all my heart I glorify the Lord, into the depth of who I am I rejoice in God my uh, Savior. A few other Bible verses that come to mind, mostly from Old Testament, Psalm 37, 25 says, I once was young and now I'm old, yet never have I seen the righteous abandoned or their children begging for bread. Jeremiah 31 verse 13 says, Then the virgin shall uh, rejoice in the dance, young men and uh, older men together, for I, am, for I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and give them joy for their sorrow. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of Adonai, uh, that he may be glorified. John chapter 16 verse 20 says, Truly, truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but, the, but your grief will turn to joy. Mary would be wondering why God choose her and give birth to Yeshua, the Messiah. How come she is part of the divine miracle? Mary or Miriam in the Hebrew language uh, simply means bitter or bitterness or sea of bitterness. Yes, her parents, out of their bitterness of slavery and oppression of the past, of the Roman imperialism, gave her such a name. But she is uh, uh, not bitter. Uh, she is blessed and magnificent. She will uh, love to sing the songs of liberation. Simeon in the temple also once said about this child uh, and told this to Mary that a, a sword will pierce uh, her own heart. I'm sure um, uh, how can you uh, hold in your heart the agony, the rejection, the suffering, the separation and the ill treatment her son will go through. Uh, gospel says in La Luke, she treasured everything in her heart. There's also another meaning in the Egyptian language about her meaning that simply means beloved. I love that meaning. She is the beloved of the Father, not only of her earthly Father, but the heavenly Father. How is it possible that the sea of bitterness in her own heart transformed into the beloved of God? The beloved of the heavenly father, not only earthly father. First of all, she comes from Nazareth, a small town in Galilee that is looked down upon. Our homes are so close to each other and the secret of her pregnancy is impossible to keep in a small village. She was a girl who uh, tried to say, serve the Lord most faithfully. The angelic visit changed her life completely forever. Yet she is not unash she's unashamed of where she come from or where she is being part of. Or she embraced her community through her song. 
a blessed as she is, the chosen of God as she is. She is not trying to exalt herself above her community and above her son. She is God's chosen extraordinary young woman to be the mother of Jesus. The greatest role anyone can ever play on this planet Earth, giving birth to God's miracle. The son of the living God, raising and providing and nurturing. That's such a privilege. She was betrothed to Joseph, a godly man, a carpenter, a stone mason. In Matthew chapter 13, 54 says, uh, oh, when Jesus returned to his hometown of Nazareth, some people were offended by his teaching. They asked, isn't he the carpenter's son? Where did he get this wisdom? The Greek word translated as a carpenter is tecton. It's not architecton. Architect is not a builder or a master builder, but he's a simple, ordinary uh, builder or a carpenter or a mason, an ordinary worker. The birth of Christ makes the beginning of the greatest revolution in the human history. Nothing in history can match uh, what God did uh, by sending his one and only begotten son to earth. It's having a spiritual, moral, economic, political, and social revolutionary impact. It is greater than the English Revolution, American Revolution, or Russian Revolution. It is greater than any revolution in the human history. Christmas is the anniversary celebration of this great revolution. Advent and the Christmas present us with this revolutionary symbolism. Every time we sing a Christmas carol, we are singing a revolutionary anthem. Every time we send a Christmas card, it makes a, a reference to Jesus uh, on those cards, the words of Christ. We are sending revolutionary literature. It's not just like any other religious holidays. The impact of uh, it is better understood by secular humanists than many of us within the church or the church context. Christmas means God invades this planet and the human race. Wherever the gospel is penetrated, the outcast is suddenly welcomed. People who cannot get along suddenly become friends, and the hungry are fed, the sick are healed, the lonely are encouraged, the lepers are cleansed, and the hurting people are helped. No lepers in the history, uh, sorry, no leaders in the history can be compared to the record of Jesus of Nazareth. Not Julius Caesar's history, Alexander the Great, or Napoleon, George Washington, or uh, Abraham Lincoln, or Gandhi. All of their impact put together, it cannot compare to Jesus of Nazareth, a man from Bethlehem. Many years ago, someone wrote a very famous essay about the impact of Jesus' life in the book called The Evidence That Demands a Verdict. Life-changing truth that for a skeptical world, authored by Josh McDowell and C.N. McDowell. I quote, here is a man who was born uh, in an obscure village, a child of a great present woman. He grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter's shop until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher and he healed many he owned no homes, he never wrote a book, he never held an office, he never had a family, he never went to college, he never put his foot inside a big city, he never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credential but himself. While still a young man, the tide of the popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. And he was uh, turned over to his enemies. He went through the, the mockery of a trial. He was nailed up on a cross between two, of the, two thieves. While he was dying, his executors gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth, his coat. When he was dead and he was taken down and laid in a borrowed tomb through the piety of a friend, 
20 long centuries have come and gone and today he is the uh, centerpiece of human race and the leader of the leader of the columns of progress I am far within the mark when I say that all of the armies that ever marched, all the navies that I've ever uh, built, all the parliaments that I ever sat, and all the kings that have ever uh, reigned put together have not affected the life of a man upon this earth as powerful as has that one solitary life. Come join the revolution, sing the song of praise and worship, adore the king. Come join the revolution, let the change, let's change the world together. Christmas is his birthday and the birthday of Jesus, the revolutionary. As we go through these words of the song, uh, Christmas hymns, and uh, as a fact of Mary uh, uh, knew God's word, and she was filled with the, with the spirit, and she said yes to God's plan for her life, and she was willing to seek help from Jesus to resolve the problem. She was a, more, a woman of worship, a woman of courage, a, a, a faithful servant of God, a chosen vessel of the Lord. In the church history called her Theotokos, simply means the bearer of God, bearer of Christ. The mother of Christ or the mother of God, even though it was a church's response to the Christological heresy called Nestorianism, which actually claimed there are two independent personalities in Christ, the God personality and the human side, which was condemned by the church council in the 5th century. Mary was honored because she was blessed by God. Reverend Dr. Howard Thotman uh, captured it best in his poem titled The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angel is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. God is concerned about the liberation of the ordinary, those who are humiliated. He identifies with them. May God bless you and help you in, the, uh, in your walk with the Lord. May God bless you with uh, his peace, his joy, his hope in the season. May God fill you with good things and send, as he, the word says, send the rich away empty. That you be one of them that not being sent away empty. May God bless you with this words. Let's pray. Almighty God, our everlasting Father, the, uh, choosing the Mary, the mother, as, uh, as a chosen vessel. Gracious God, please grant your wisdom and grace so that we may continue to be a channel of your miracle among our community, in our own personal life, in our own community and family, and in our own religious life. God, continue to provide us with your grace and mercy. Help us to sing the songs of liberation and continue to celebrate this revolutionary impact God, Christ has done in our world. Help everyone. Bless us. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen and amen.